People of God, happy Easter. Happy Easter. For those of you who are guests, I'm Father Matt Pennington. I'm the pastor here. I'm so happy to welcome you to our celebration this morning. As we're gathering together, if you have a cell phone, um, could you check to make sure that it's silent? Um, they have a way of going off at the worst possible moments, and I'd hate to think what the eternal consequences could be for you if your phone goes off on Easter Sunday. It could be devastating. During the Easter season, we have a, a very special Alleluia that we do. And the thing about it is that there's this hand clap. You know, the Alleluia is this great shout of joy. It's a, a song that we sing, you know, in, in anticipation of hearing the stories of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So we actually physically stand up and we sing this song of Alleluia. But on this Easter season, we have this special one that we do, and it has this rhythmic sort of hand clap that we want you to do. Now, Kayla says, she told me that, the, that you people couldn't do it. She doesn't think any of you have rhythm. But I said, no, no, Kayla, you're wrong. They can do it. They can do it. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start doing it. Okay, I'm going to start doing the rhythm. I want you to just, as soon as you get it, just jump in. Just jump in and see if you can prove Kayla wrong on Easter Sunday, okay? It goes like this. Perfect. I told you. I told you, you they know, could do you're it. Right, you're right. St. Augustine says the person that sings prays twice, everybody. So Kayla and all of our wonderful musicians are going to warm up our voices as we all gather together on Easter Sunday in the best parish in the entire world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Let's go over our psalm. It's a beautiful song called This is the Day. And it goes like this. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Join us. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. and greet those around you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs>
We gather together on this Easter morning in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light, grace, and peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Let all say amen who reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises. Amen. Let all say amen who believe in God, loving Father of all people, who's called us to live together to build a world in unity and peace. Let us say amen who believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who suffered, died, and rose again for us so that we might learn to live for others and find hope in his victory over death. Amen. Let us say amen who believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. This is our faith, the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Let's be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power? He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered the head not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and he believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I think you've got the hand clap down perfectly. In the 1970s, there was an American author by the name of Peter Benchley, and he wrote a, a novel that was really sort of a retelling of the classic book, Moby Dick. It was about a great white shark that was terrorizing a local community in the East. He called his monster Jaws. The book was a blockbuster, and the subsequent film that came after it was equally popular. I think it was the first big hit for Steven Spielberg. 
Peter Benchley subsequently wrote another novel a few years later called The Deep. And that was also made into a film with Nick Nolte and Jacqueline Bisset. I loved this movie. I loved this movie. And this was back in the 1970s. I mean, there was no VHS, there was no DVD, there was no streaming. If you wanted to see it again, you had to go back to the theater. I think I went and saw that movie six times. I just loved it. The story of the film is about a young couple who are on holiday in Bermuda. And they are scuba diving off a wreck in the ocean. And they find a treasure. And in finding the treasure, it leads them into this great adventure. They made the whole idea of scuba diving seem so glamorous. And I just decided, I'm gonna learn how to do this. I am gonna learn how to scuba dive. I was in college, I was at a point in my life where I wanted to have as much adventure as possible. Canoe down the Colorado River, I'm in. Learn how to scuba dive, I'm there. Jump out of an airplane with a parachute on my back, forget it. <laughs> no, 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 there are limits, there are limits. I don't know if there are any of you who are certified to do uh, scuba diving. You, you actually have to be certified in order to get the tanks with oxygen. Um, it's a very dangerous sport, and so you have to be trained how to do this. You have to take a class, and the class is really conducted in a swimming pool, and then once you've reached a certain level of expertise, then you go to the ocean, and that's where you're tested, and that's where you become certified. So. Uh, basically, there's a million things you have to learn. You know, first of all, it's it's a buddy sport, so you have to really learn how to signal your buddy under the water, how to indicate various different things that are happening at any given time. If you're in danger, if there's a problem, where you're going, etc. You have to learn how to manipulate the equipment. They call it ditching and donning. So. Under the water, you have to be able to get all of that apparatus off and you have to get it back on again, under the water. You have to learn a lot of very specialized first aid techniques, like, like how to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation while the two of you are bobbing on the surface of the water. So I'm taking this class in the swimming pool and the day comes where they put the tank on me, the respirator and the weights and I'm sitting on the bottom of the pool. And there comes a moment where I can no longer hold my breath. And so I... <sighs> breathe under the water. It's such an extraordinary feeling, right? Because you've been taught since birth that this is not something you can do. If you try to breathe under the water, you're gonna drown. You know intellectually, I have a tank of oxygen, I have a respirator, I'm breathing from that. But your body says, no, 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 no. No, 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 you can't do that. And yet, you do it. You're under the water, breathing. It's the most extraordinary feeling. The other thing that I'll tell you, everybody, and maybe you, maybe you have this, a, a sense of this from watching this on television or movies or, or maybe even snorkeling, but the ocean is alive. It's a living entity. And, and there are tides that are causing this pulling and pushing. And when you are submerged in the ocean, everything is moving in this sort of symphonic harmony, the plankton, the algae, the undersea life, and you are weightless, floating in this harmonized, synchronized world. It's utterly and completely unlike life on the planet Earth. You're in an alternative universe. Today, the church is celebrating the Feast of the Resurrection. And what that means is that we believe that God came to us and that he lived and he died and he rose from the dead. And if we believe in him, that what we believe is that when we die, we too will rise up into eternal life. Now, if we believe it, then the question is, what is that place like? 
what, what is the kingdom of God like? What does it look like? What does it like? We need a brochure. We want to look at images. We want to have some sense of what that is going to be about. My mother was named Janice Pennington. If she were alive yesterday, she would have celebrated her 96th birthday. She was from a place called Texarkana, Arkansas, and she had a twang. And she was absolutely terrified of dying. She didn't like to talk about dying. She would like to think about dying. And I, I absolutely believe that my mother thought that if she was really good, that maybe she might never, ever have to die, okay? So in the last years of her life, I, I felt badly, you know, that my mother was dreading the inevitable. And I wanted to put her in some kind of peace. So I bucked up my courage. And I said, mother, you have nothing to fear. You've been a wonderful wife. You've been a loving mother. You've been a faithful woman your entire life. God is gonna reward you. And she looked at me, <laughs> these big blue eyes, with a certain amount of hostility. <laughs> and she said, Matt, I know what I've got down here. I'm not so sure what's on the other side. <laughs> and you know, there's some Southern wisdom there, right? I mean, we don't know. We don't know. Jesus is very indecisive about it. He says it's utterly unlike life on earth. So here's my guess. It's just, a, it's just a guess, okay? It's just me, 35 years of preaching, you know, theology. This is what I suspect happens. When we die, the essence of who we are, what we call the soul, it extricates itself from the frame, the body, and it ascends into some sort of interconnectedness with this great light and warmth that is our loving God. The laws of gravity no longer apply. The, the membrane that separates me from you and you from God vanishes. And we enter into this mystical oneness of perfect peace and contentment and fulfillment with God, the creator, and all the things that distinguish us here disappear. No more woman or man or black or white or gay or straight or rich or poor or educated or uneducated, gone. We're one, one in this mystical, harmonic, interconnectedness with the one who made us. It's just an idea. <laughs> this is my opinion. I have no proof. But here's what I can tell you, absolutely without a doubt. If you have faith, if you believe in God, then you have a an inner strength that can never be taken from you. And not just an inner strength, but a completely unique perspective. The perspective is that this, all of this, that you think is so important, your money, your career, your family, your health, politics, you name it, all of it, it's temporary. It's just temporary. And we, as faithful people, are moving inextricably and consistently toward our ultimate destination, this alternate universe with God. If you have that faith, it's like possessing a superpower. It's as if as you're leaving your life, it's as if you can breathe when you're under the water.
for all the family of God, that on this glorious Easter morning, we might be filled with the awe and wonder of an empty tomb, that we might roll the stones away in our own lives and let this good news shine, that we might share it. We pray to the Lord. For the beauty and mercy of the church, that we might always strive to be more light, more compassion, more loving peace. We pray to the Lord. For peace and liberty in all places where there is war, that as the holy seasons of Passover, Ramadan and Easter intersect, religious and political leaders around the world might come together that they might choose the way of peace and end the suffering and violence. We pray to the Lord. For our communities and under our own roofs, that we might see a springtime renewal where there might blossom more seeds of forgiveness, tolerance, and generosity. That we might cultivate patience and be better listeners that through our mutual longing for God and our shared desire for prosperity, we might strive to become more peaceful, more loving, more holy people. We pray to the Lord. For all those in need of healing and comfort and for the sick, the suffering and the dying and those who care for them, we say their names aloud at this time. John, Mike, Sue, Sandy, Creighton. That through the healing power of the Holy Spirit, may all those who are ill be brought to the fullness of health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of all who have died, and in a special way, for Jan Hunter, Chad Wersch and Bale, Al Lidicote Sr., Benito and Jacinta and Lobel Sukong, and all those that we have loved and lost, may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, as we live each day, we're mindful that, that the day will come in which we will see you face to face. As we prepare for that day, we pray that you will give to us courage, resiliency, perseverance, and hope. And may these gifts sustain us on this great adventure that we take every single day through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are prepared for the altar, please join us in singing, Alleluia, Love is Alive. This morning, everyone, we take up a collection to support the ministries of Nativity of Our Lady. As you can imagine, this is a very important collection for us, so we, we so appreciate your generosity on this Easter Sunday.
rejoicing in Christ. Carry your joy to the darkness and light. Tell the world, tell the world he is alive. Hear the good news of this glorious day. Every heart singing as heaven proclaims he is Lord. sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father exultant with paschal gladness O Lord we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord Amen. the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For this death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Denny, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the joyful hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Thank you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Maybe some lights. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. 
Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If this Easter morning you are a guest in the Catholic Church or if there's some other reason why you're not prepared to receive Eucharist, we'd like to invite you to, to receive a blessing. And the way you do that here is as you approach us, if you'll just cross your arms in front of you like this, that's a sign for us to reach out and to bless you on the forehead in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for you to respond to that blessing by saying amen. For those of you who are in our parish hall, uh, the Eucharistic ministers will be coming to you there. And uh, I would invite all of us to remain standing until everyone has had a chance to receive either a blessing or communion. There's a strange custom that sometimes happens. It would never, ever happen at Nativity of Our Lady, but an odd cu custom that can occur in other churches where after they go to communion, <laughs> it's just, it's baffling, but they, they actually leave the church and go get into their car to avoid the traffic jam. <laughs> the cosmic consequences of such an act would be devastating, everybody. So I encourage you all to stay with us now until the end of our celebration. Let's continue in our worship together by singing, I am the bread of life.
honor and glory. Worthy are the ones who believe to receive the goodness of Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so excited to have welcomed all of you to Easter Sunday with our new atrium. If you're a, if you're a guest here, this has been a long-awaited addition to our church. It's uh, it's been a long project, but, uh, but it's turned out very beautifully, and I'm so, so grateful for your support and for your patience as we've undergone this, this big transformation. We, we, this building was really built as a school. Um, some of you probably were actually students in the school, and we really wanted to make it look more like a church and really make a statement to people that we were a church and also to have an actual entry. It was, uh, it was a little bit bewildering how to get in here in the past, so, um, so I'm really grateful that that was able to happen. Speaking of guests, I'd like to say that if you are a guest from out of town, I hope you know whenever you're visiting San Luis Obispo that we have our doors wide open to welcome you to our celebration. If you are someone who lives locally and who says, you know, going to Mass once or twice a year is just fine, thanks, um, know that we would love to have you join us on a regular basis. It says in the documents of the church that when all of the members are gathered, Christ is more viably present. So the more of you there are, the more we experience um, the presence of Christ. It's a great, great parish and a wonderful place to be, and we'd love to have you be a part of our great journey. I'm so grateful for everyone, all of our volunteers and the staff who've worked so hard, our wonderful musicians, everybody who's really helped to make these Holy Week celebrations a, a great success and a very welcoming place for all of you. So a big thank you to all of those. I'm wearing a solid gold vestment. A solid gold vestment. I mean, impressive, wouldn't you say? And yet, and yet, Father Ed Holterhoff has managed to upstage me yet again on Easter Sunday. <laughs> now, who is a better looking? It's not easy, everybody, to upstage someone in a solid gold vestment, but he did it. <laughs> there is um, a special ending to our Easter celebrations. Um, I'm the one who always tends to kind of mess it up. Let me see if I can get it right. So I say, the mass has ended. Um, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. And you say, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Do you think we could do it? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's give it a try. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Jesus Christ is risen to